M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my videos on the Radtail 580. So let's do a power test. So we've got a dummy load connected here, patch lead to the radio, and on the A band, we're on 70 centimeters, which is selected. Now, the way you select the different three bands here, you just press the red. Okay, and we're scrolling down one at a time and power. Just go menu. And it's the number four option, and we're on high. And there's two options, low and high. I've got a feeling this is the first ever sort of firmware, so we'll see what they bring out in the future. But for now, let's just transmit. So look here, I don't know, I did do one test just now, and you can see the frequency, and it's seven and a half watts. Let's just do it again. M0 FXB test. And that's about six watts on 70 centimeters. Okay. Now you can see the spectrum in the background. You decide what you think about that. Not really showing much on that. Let me have a look now. Oh, that's set to two. We'll, well, I'll change that to 77s in a sec. Let me do the two meter one, then I'll change the spectrum to 70 cents. Anyway, six watts. And then we'll go down to two meters and power is high again. Remember we're on a dummy load, so M0 FXB test test, there's our signal, M0 FXB test test test, and that's eight and a half, which I think's okay. You know, I think it's about right, you know, because you've got gain in many antennas. I've got a patch lead here, you know, it's not like the perfect setup. It's not a laboratory setup, if you know what I mean. Um, it gives you a general idea. So let's just, I'll just quickly change the settings on my <coughs> scanner there. I'm not going to calibrate it now. I'm just going to change it. If you've not got one of these analyzers, this is the ultra model. And the difference between the ultra and the standard is that it will measure, you know, your Wi-Fi, you know, 2.4 gigs, 5 gigs. So if you ever get one, get the ultra model. And I've got the four inch one here. So I'm just going to tap the screen. And just go to start and we'll do 430 megahertz. Tap the screen again, stop 436 megahertz. So it should show at the bottom if we set it correctly. Believe it or not, there is actually a waterfall. We'll put that on in a minute. So, yeah, so let's just go to the A band like so. And then we'll key. Uh, it's quite disappointing that it's only six watts on 77. M0 FXB test, 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 M0 FXB test. Okay, 5.77. Yeah, not great, is it? I'll just show you this waterfall feature. I'll turn on one of my nodes, so we'll go like so. And uh, where is it? Go to back. Uh, is it level? Sorry, display. Then waterfall. Now remember, this thing actually, it actually receives, and you can turn up the volume. You can hear something. It's a tiny little speaker, but you can. Now I have managed to set some memory channels here on the bottom. That's my hubnet node there. Let's just see if it's turned on. Turn up the volume a bit more. M0 FXB test. No, I don't think it's on. I'll just have to turn that on. Okay, I've fired up my node, which um, is an all-star node. It basically connects a computer to the internet, which then you can talk to with your radios, because inside my all-star node is a small radio. You should hear it booting up now and call out an IP address, and then we can control that radio using an IP address. I mean, it's just picking it up from the dummy load, you know? See the signal there, though? And that's... What I like about this is that you're about £90, but you've got, like, a full SDR receiver. And it's, and it's you know, look at it. I mean, it's like all bands. Um, and you can put it in your pocket. It's great fun. I don't really know how to use it, but I... Whenever I need to use it, I learn that application, and at the moment we're just scanning the, you know, the, the frequency 
bands. So I can't find anything to do with DTMF. So normally to DTMF into my node, I just key the mic on the right frequency. And I think pretty sure we're on low. Menu, TX power. Actually, we haven't tested low, have we? So let's do that now. Confirm. So I'll just quickly key on low. Five. That's funny, isn't it? Let's go menu, TX power. Hi. Ah, that is better. Well, it's only one watt better, but it's better. So no, I'm not keying over anyone because I'm not connected. So normally to connect to the node, I would just key the mic, try and knock, knock everything over here, and go star three, four, one, five, two, two, and then let go. And it's not working because they haven't added DTMF yet. I mean, they will, because that's a firmware thing. It's not even hard to add. But I can't see that it's got DTMF. So like I said, they still got some work to do on this. So to log into my node, I've been using the all scan, but there's different, you know, web apps, software. But all I do is type in my node number that I want to connect to, which is going to be one of these. Look, see that? So let's try 43845. Just here, we type it here. This is the current box that I'm using made by Bill on eBay, and it's packed into a little Raspberry Pi box, but that is actually on top a radio. So when I hit connect, it connects it to. -O -Y connected to and how cool is that? I just think anyone that hasn't got a node is crazy because they are cheap. You can make one yourself for about 50 pound or just better to buy one. But if you make one, the learning is amazing. Um, so I'm now on Hubnet. Uh, unfortunately, no one's chatting. They were. It's quite busy, so I'm sure they will. I'm just in the process of making a node now. I just make them for the fun of it because the parts aren't expensive. I've got quite a few lying around. That's the sound fob. Obviously, you have to modify it and all the little wires and things. There's only actually one component I added, which was the 1K resistor, everything else is just wires and links. Then yes, you have to sacrifice a 10 pound radio, which is an old Bofum, but they come up on eBay sometimes. You'll get two for like 12 quid. So this is the old Bofum 888. If you look close though, labeled as 666. So one wire there, that's your, pretty sure that's my PTT wire. Another wire, thanks to G7RPG, is going to go here, it's called COS. And then power, it goes to power, this whole unit is here. Uh, this little bit here, that's going to be your, your live. And uh, I see the third one across, the third one across, that's going to have a little resistor on it. I uh, can't remember if it's 10K or 1K. I have to look it up. I think it's 1K, I think. But anyway, I look it up. Um, and then you earth it to one of these. I'm not going to guess. So there's an earth going across. Sometimes you need to add a few more earths to stop that whining sort of sound you get. And then you plug it into a Raspberry Pi and away you go. So anyway, that concludes our power test. And you've seen the Spectrum Analyzer. Now, I haven't done what others do where they connect it direct to the antenna, put, I don't know, like attenuators in line and then tell you how bad the radio is because I don't see the point. I just think we know that these budget radios are not giving out great, great emissions. So you just need to be careful when using them. I mainly use them actually for receive and the odd short QSO via a repeater on low power. Um, but yeah, the sellers and manufacturers need to do the right thing. So thanks for watching my YouTube channel, 73.